Here's a fun fact about monoid maps from the natural numbers with zero and addition to any other monoid, x with neutral element e and operator of. They are completely determined by what they do with one. So that's to say, if I've got two of them, f and g, and I know that f of one equals g of one, then these two are always equal. How am I going to show that? Well, by induction on n, of course. So, base case, I know that f of zero has to be equal to e because f is a monoid map, but then g is also a monoid map, so g of zero also has to be e. We're on our way. Step case. Suppose uh, that uh, f of k equals g of k. Well, now consider f of k plus 1. Uh, well, because f is a monoid map, that has to be op of f of k, f of 1. But by induction hypothesis, that's op of g of k, f of 1. But by our supposition that f and g agree at 1, that's op of g of k and g of 1. And uh, because g is a monoid map, that's equal to g of k plus 1. So indeed, we've got, if they agree at k, they must agree at k plus 1. So they must agree everywhere. So that tells us that the recipe we had earlier for taking n copies of f of 1 and squidging them together is not only a good recipe for making monoid maps, it's pretty much, it's the only recipe for making monoid maps. Every function that is a monoid map out of the natural numbers with 0 and plus can be made according to that recipe. Other implementations are possible, but other functions are not possible. So we're learning quite a lot from the rules confining our possible choices. We've realised that if our operations are going to be monoid maps, they're completely determined by what they do with one. So the fun game is then to play spot the monoid map.